What's up everybody, I'm Stan and welcome to Detail Comics where we go over comics in detail. This is the weekly one shot where I go over a specific topic, give you a little bit more information and backstory, and help inform you about comic books and their storylines. In this one I'm going to be talking about Ultimate Thor's Hammer and how it made its appearance in The Unworthy Thor. So The Unworthy Thor was one of my favorite issues that's come out in recent times simply because it's picking up where a lot of things left off. But in order to understand where everything is going as well as what is Ultimate Thor's hammer doing in the new Marvel Universe, as well as its powers, we should really backtrack a little bit. So the start of this entire arc and concept really began in Original Sin issue number 7. So if you remember Original Sin, Original Sin is the conflict where essentially the orb stole the Watcher's eyes after murdering him on the moon, and they were sought after by pretty much everybody. And this is a culminating act where Nick Fury is actually in one-on-one -on -one combat with Thor as he's trying to take possession of the Watcher's eyes. And while he tells the, the Odin son, it's like, hey man, this is going to hurt a little bit. It's just like, what, do you, what can you do against the god of thunder? Well, evidently it only takes a whisper, which is still unknown at this point. It only takes that whisper to disable the abilities of Thor and make him unworthy. So for the rest of that comic book series, for the rest of the original Sin event, we just see Thor trying to grab his hammer from the ground and his inability to do so, marking his unworthiness. When we pick up the events of Thor number one, this shows that Thor has been at this game for a long time. He has been trying to pick up his his hammer forever. You know, he's been, it's been months, it's been weeks, and he's just unworthy. So he's tattered, he just is powerless compared to who he was as his former self. Once he comes to this realization, he heads back to Asgard, finds his new battle axe, and goes out seeking a solution to his issue of why is he unworthy and how can he regain the, the trust and the real power of Mjolnir and become the god of thunder once again. However, he does take on a few things that are a little bit more than he can chew, as Malekith is started to kind of invade this Roxxon depot area, and ultimately we find them both in conflict, and then all of a sudden, whoa, no more arm for Thor. That is one of those most interesting things, because we don't see the return of Thor until uh, number three, so issue number three of the Thor, and that's when he shows up with his Uru metal arm and everything like that, so it's really interesting to see where that kind of comes from and how he is in his current situation as it sits. Uh, throughout the rest of the Thor series, he's basically just hunting down who could possibly be uh, the Lady Thor, you know, the female Thor, the mighty Thor, who that person could be. When he finally comes to a conclusion, he realizes he's wrong, and then there's the giant reveal that Jane Foster is the actual mighty Thor at this point in time. And this is where Secret Wars kicks off. So the next iteration that we see, the mighty Thor, who is now unworthy, you know, the unworthy Thor, is in this Thor's storyline, which is also written by Jason Aaron. So this is a battle world realm, and it centers around the Thor core. So the Thor core is all of the Thors of the multiverse that Doom has pulled together to make his own personal uh, bodyguards, his own personal police force. And Ultimate Thor from the Ultimate Universe is basically a homicide detective in this Thor core who happens to be parted up with uh, Beta Ray Bill, which is super cool. So we see this kind of investigation unfold over the four issues that this uh, Thor's book really is. They're tracking down these kind of violently uh, misshapen people that have been murdered all over the places and, and evidently Loki has brought the bodies out into the open to bring light to the situation because he understands the truth behind this world. He understands that God Doom might not necessarily be God Doom, that this isn't how things are supposed to be. And when we see the mighty Thor appear, you know, Jane Foster, who was kind of sucked out of this Secret Wars universe as part of the incursions and, and all that kind of stuff, she comes in to rally the troops against the falsehood that is Doom, and Thorleaf, you know, he just jumps on it. Ultimate Thor is all about this, and who, what's he wielding the entire time? His hammer axe, which we see here. So, he's in here, he's in the middle of the fray of battle, we're about to conclude the storyline, and we see the final results of the destruction of Battleworld. So this is when Reed Richards and Doom are kind of in their conflict and everything like that, and everything resets back to normal. But when we see the New Earth come out, there's this comet that appears out of some sort of dimensional rift, and it is just streaming through space. And what do we see? We see old Asgard, and then ultimately just smashes. This, this rocket smashes into the ground, revealing Ultimate Thor's hammer. So Ultimate Thor's hammer makes its way into the 616 universe as a result of a dimensional rift in the, the transition between Battleworld and Earth-616. But we do run into a few little inconsistencies, so we're going to have to talk about Ultimate Thor's hammer and his abilities. So Ultimate Thor, it wasn't really a god. You know, there was a point in time during the Ultimate storylines where he, you know, came back to godhood and whatnot. He realized he was the reincarnation of, of Thor, the Norse god. 
But what his whole situation was really based on, originally it was technology-based. So his armor gave him flight, it gave him super strength, it gave him limited invulnerability, but his hammer was something that was created as a power source for the armor, because they didn't want the power source on the armor, otherwise it might, you know, spontaneously explode and combust on him. So with the size being an issue, Thor's just like, make it a hammer. <laughs> So that's where we get the origin of Thor's, uh, you know, ultimate Thor's hammer. It's really a tool that was designed to power on his armor and keep him at the godhood level that he was at. However, the hammer does possess some powers of its own. So it has the ability to teleport through the fourth dimension to any place in the universe. So it's, we're talking instantaneous teleportation of things up to the size of a helicarrier, which is pretty cool on its own. It also has the ability to manipulate weather and create lightning. The interesting thing is going to be how this Ultimate Thor's Hammer, which was technology-based, how it was shifted through the Secret Wars storyline. Because this is really established by Jonathan Hickman. Uh, you know, when he became a much more mystical character and he was wielding the original Mjolnir in the Ultimate Universe, well, things kind of went by the wayside, but then he ultimately transitioned back to who he was and then his technology was improved by Tony Stark, making him more powerful. However, that completely changed the shape and form of this Ultimate Thor's hammer as part of that storyline. So, if we're looking at this iteration of Ultimate Thor's hammer, then there are some definite possibilities for powers, but but if Doom plucked him from the universe and then just imbued him with the magical energies that were associated with all of the Thors across all the universes, we could see a very different power set for this ultimate Thor hammer. So that's one of those things that we're going to have to keep an eye out on. So that's the story of Unworthy Thor as well as Ultimate Thor's Hammer. But I want to know what you guys thought, see if I missed anything, as well as anything that you think about theories going forward. So hit me up in the comments down below so we can talk about those things. As always, if you like what you see, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe right there to get more news, reviews, and commentary on comic books, comic book movies, comic book TV shows and games, and anything and everything inside the world of comics.